Hello and welcome to the Good Robot Andes, uh, Season 2, Episode 4. My name is Andy Balaam and this is... I'm Andy Cockerill. And the film we're going to talk about today is... Bone Tomahawk. Bone Tomahawk. Indeed. Um, and what what we usually do... I must warn you today, I've taken my shoes off. Oh, really? Yeah. Is that necessary? Well, my feet were hot. <laughs> But um, it, we can't predict. I haven't done one of these with my shoes off before, so we can't predict what I'm going to say or do. But do you think? It, okay, that's interesting. So uh, <clears throat> I would say that in the summertime, I almost exclusively wear closed-toed sandals, no socks. Right. So I'm currently not wearing it. I, I don't wear shoes in the summertime uh, okay. unless unless I'm going out, out somewhere special. Okay, but I mean that's yeah, that's been the usual for this podcast whereas me taking my shoes off is is unusual so it's a big deal yeah we'll go with it all right it seems okay so far i'm pretty sure i feel relaxed i'm pretty sure we'll roll with it yeah yeah and it yeah it's like my feet are gripping you know because i'm on a i'm on a chair that can rotate but my feet are are reasonably gripping the the floor so this is this sounds like the big bang theory okay yeah have you seen that yeah, I've heard of it. I'm binge watching it at the moment. Mm, oh, yeah. sorry, we are binge watching it at the moment. It's uh, it is entertaining. Seems okay. I mean, yeah, seems okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Um. So yeah. Uh. That's but that's not what this podcast's about. Indeed not. Uh. This. Uh. What we generally do at this point is, uh, I give you a plot summary of the film that we're going to talk about not having seen it or having heard anything about it. And we're in the fortunate position with Bone Tomahawk, is that right? It is correct, yeah, that is correct. Um, that I actually have heard nothing about it at oh, all. cool. Um, what comes to mind when I hear that title is a, a cartoon. It often it does seem to be cartoons that come to mind, or not even a cartoon, an animation. A Disney animation. What, what usually these, comes yeah, to mind is a rollicking yeah, is it, Disney animation. It, yeah. Well, not rollicking in this case. <laughs> or is it? Uh, <laughs> but uh, a sort of... I dropped a pen. Whoops. Um, a, a sort of cute... Like, we're talking some cute uh, natives where, who wear bones for decoration. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what... I, you know, and it's funny. They're funny. <laughs> is that it? <laughs> That's what I've got. That's yeah. I think is if that you were, is that basically. Well, do, is there any point going on? I think basically, if you'd gone to um, a movie studio and you pitched that, they would have thrown you out immediately. Really? Yeah. Um, I wondered many why that kept happening. It's not a very good synopsis, but anyway, uh, oh, it's wrong. It's okay. Well, that's probably good for the. It, it's for the completely film. and utterly wrong. So, Bone okay. Tomahawk is a uh, 2015. American horror western film. Hang on, let me just get that straight. Yes, yes. American, right? American westerns are not unusual. Yeah, no, not unusual at all. I mean, they are less usual these days, but yeah, yeah, not okay, not that fair. unusual. But a horror western that's oh, unusual. Horror western, yeah. So okay, okay. Um, it's the the directorial debut of a somebody called S. Craig Zala, and he, who also wrote it, and it stars uh, Kurt Russell. Okay. Um, Patrick, of Patrick, well, lots of things. Kurt Russell of many, many things, many great. Um, thinking of two fantastic John Carpenter movies, uh, The Thing, yes, and uh, Big Trouble in Little China, which, although probably in many people's eyes is not a fantastic movie, but I have quite a soft spot for it. Okay, it's I don't quite, know what it's I've quite seen. schlocky. Um, I've obviously heard of it. Yeah, it's it's a cult classic. I think you'd call that. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, the legend that is Kurt Russell, I, I think that he is a bit of a legend, a bit of a legendary actor. Um, Patrick Wilson, um, who's been who's been qu- quite a lot of stuff. Uh, Matthew Fox, who is probably most famous to most people for being Doctor Jack in a series called Lost. Ah, oh, Lost. Yeah, I watched some of that before I became frustrated that it wasn't <laughs> what it promised to be. I watched it to the bitter end. Really? Yes. How and- frustrating was it? Uh, somewhat, but actually I quite enjoy being manipulated and messed around by a TV show. Even though it doesn't have any coherent coherence. 
<laughs> yeah. In the end. Yeah. Uh, no, I really, I really enjoyed Lost. So uh, okay. Matthew Fox is from Lost. Right. Uh, uh, an actor called Richard Jenkins, who uh, is again another uh, another guy who's been on the TV quite a lot. He was in a show called Six Feet Un. No, yeah, Six Feet Under. Yeah, amazing. In which he played the. Um, uh, the he he played in Flashback, the dead father. Ah, right, okay. Really, yeah, that, really great actor, Richard Jenkins. Amazing series. <clears throat> too basically too sad to watch. Yeah. Did you watch it to the end? No, I, we we gave up halfway through season two mm-hmm. when it was all about just the misery of human relationships. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of that. And the sister was in it, and she was being all harsh mm-hmm. and truthful about. Yeah. Oh, it was horrible. Yeah. And it's just, it's just like, yeah. There are enough sad people already that you know that you wish weren't sad yeah. without knowing some new made up people <laughs> who are really sad. So, um. But it yeah. was amazingly good. So, yeah, go on. It is. Uh, there's also an actor called, actress called Lily Simmons, who I haven't seen anything before. Um, David Arquette, one of the Arquette family. An actor called mm-hmm. Sid Haig, who's been in some horror movies. Uh, and Sean Young, who I haven't seen anything for a long time, but she was in um, Blade Runner back in the oh, day. Oh, really? As, as um, Rachel Replicant. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 An iconic performance in an what? iconic film. What a film. Yeah. Watched When they re-released it, we went to see it. Yeah. It's, oh. I, did you see it at the cinema, did you? Yes. It was so good. Yeah. It was it was as good as I hoped it would be. And it's getting a sequel. Yeah, which... It's in production yeah. right now. Well, not in production, in pre-production right now. I'm so worried. I'm I, just going to disregard it before it even I'm happens. Not, I'm not that worried. I think that Denis Villeneuve is a very, very fine filmmaker. And um, did we did we ever talk about a film called... Uh, with um, Jake Gyllenhaal... Uh, about uh, double doppelgangers and a man who meets his double. Did we, we talk, talked did about we talk a Jake Gyllenhaal film? But I don't oh no, that was that, that was Nightcrawler. Oh yeah. Okay, yeah. so Denis Villeneuve. Um, we're, we're we are digressing slightly, but I don't really care. It's all so. right. Yeah, my, the shoes are off. Uh, okay, shoes are off. Um, Denis Villeneuve most recently made a film called Sicario. I've heard of that uh, with uh, Emily. Blunt and um, Benicio del Toro and Josh Brolin mm. about um, about the sort of grey area of policing on the border of the United States and Mexico. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Really, really good film, featuring uh, I think one of del Toro's best performances ever. Oh, is that the one? Uh, yeah, I've heard about it. Yeah, it, uh, they, yeah. It's about drugs and things, right? Yeah, it's really yeah. yeah, it is, yeah. But it but it's also about um how far are you how far are you willing to go? Yeah, and how much right. are you willing to compromise yourself in order to get what you think you want. And uh Emily Blunt's character is a quite principled FBI agent mm-hmm. who I won't I won't spoil it because we might talk about it at some point, but you know, um about halfway through the film she realizes that she's completely out of her depth and she's dealing with people who are unprincipled and uh, don't mm-hmm. really play by the rules on either side you know so uh, but that, that so um so Denny Villeneuve made that he also made a movie called Prisoners a few years ago with Hugh Jackman and Jake Gyllenhaal again mm-hmm. and he's a really he's a really good director he he can take great material and make material and make it even better so mm. I think that he has quite a bleak worldview, so I think he suits the Blade Runner universe quite nicely. Someone um, posted a, a picture on Twitter recently of a city, I think Hong Kong mm. or somewhere, with a with a film playing on the side of a building in the fog. Wow. It just really looks like Blade Runner. Like Blade like Runner. It's, yeah. it's finally come. Yeah, it's here. Um, so, uh, okay, so back to... Anyway. <laughs> back to Bone Tomahawk. Yeah. That. So th- this came out in... <clears throat> it was made in 2015, but it came out this year. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it came out in sort of February, March sort of time. 
around the same time as Quentin Tarantino's The Hateful Eight, which also features Kurt Russell. Okay. In yeah. fact, he's sporting the same rather wonderful facial hair in, right. in Bone Tomahawk that he had in The Hateful Eight. So I assume these films were made at roughly the same time. I think we should do a special bonus episode at the end of this uh, of recording this podcast, just yeah. so we know. I know what to think about the hateful eight. Okay, yeah, all right. Don't don't say anything else. We'll do that. So, um, it was released earlier this year. to very very good reviews. As I said, it's direct, directorial debut. It's a horror film. Mm-hmm. And a brief synopsis is is that because if it was if it was a western, I wouldn't bother. If well, it's a horror film, I might. Yeah. So it it mashes those two things quite nicely. Um, and the synop- a brief synopsis is is that a couple of drifters who make a living robbing travellers, uh, they come across uh, a Native American burial site. Now, that's never a very good thing no. in any film. <laughs> not, not for people who you've established a morally dubious. <laughs> exactly. Um, and they are attacked. And one of them is killed, uh, but one of them escapes. And he escapes to a small town called Bright Hope, where he buries the stuff that they'd stolen. Mm-hmm. Which and is what? Just sort of normal stuff? Yeah, just regular stuff, yeah. Okay. And um, the town's deputy, played by Richard Jenkins, mm-hmm. spots him and goes to tell the sheriff, who is played by Kurt Russell, that of course he spotted... <laughs> Pardon? Of course. Of well, course. Who else yeah. would who be? Who else would be, yeah. He's... And he's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, and that he spotted someone dodgy. Mm-hmm. And then they confront this guy and um, try and figure out who he is. Uh, there's, a, there's a bit of a shootout and uh, the guy gets shot in the leg by the sheriff. Um, and they, they call for the doctor, who's a, who's a lady, who's played by Lily Simmons. She's married to um, Patrick Wilson's character, who's got a leg wound, he's, who's also been shot in the leg by the sheriff. Funnily enough, <laughs> the sheriff seems to do a lot of this. Uh-huh. Um, but during the night, when when the doctor is supposed to be tending to the prisoner in the jail, uh, together with another deputy, um, the jail and the stables are attacked by unknown people. And the doctor, the deputy, and the um, prisoner are all missing. Mm-hmm. And nobody knows where they are, but there's some there's some paraphernalia left behind, and one of these things is a bone tomahawk. Okay. So, yeah. Do we stand up and clap? We stand up and clap and say yes. Yes. Okay. We've had the title of the film now. Yeah. Um, so they call for the local um, tracker, Indian tracker, and ask him what's going on. You know, who who are these people that have taken our people? Mm-hmm. And the this Native American guy says that, well, they're not my people, and you're better off not going anywhere near them. Mm-hmm. And when they ask why, he says because they're troglodytes. They live in the cl- caves, and uh, they're cannibals. They're savages. Okay. Right. So he's not saying they're they're supernatural. No, they're not. They're not supernatural. They're just uh, not very nice. Pre. Iron Age um, savages, mm-hmm. and the the Native Americans stay well away from them because they're mm-hmm. dangerous and will probably eat them. Mm-hmm. But uh, the sheriff forms up a very small posse consisting of himself, uh, Richard Jenkins, the deputy, Matthew Fox, who's a local landowner and is quite proud of the fact that he's killed a lot of Indians. <laughs> um, seems quite handy with a gun, and uh, the doctor's wife, doctor's husband, sorry played by Patrick Wilson, who is nursing this leg wound. And you would think he would be a bit of a hindrance on a trip like this. Mm-hmm. And um, so they head in t- towards the hills to uh, try and track down these troglodytes. Can I just interrupt you yes. there and ask you yes. why? You said you've been waiting for this film for a long time. Maybe you said that before we started recording, but you said you've been waiting. Yes, so expectantly, yeah, yeah. So I mean, I, I read me about. Why. Okay, so I read about this. Um, I think last year in Empire Magazine, in, in their sort of coming soon section, mm-hmm. and I just thought the combination of a western and and Kurt Russell mm-hmm. and horror was just too, you know, it was mouth watering. <laughs> what could go wrong? Well, yeah. yeah, we'll come to that. 
in a minute. We'll come to that <laughs> later on. But um, so they uh, they head into the hills and uh, they get attacked by hostiles. And um, although they manage to kill some of them, the sheriff and the deputy and the um, no, that's it. The sheriff and the deputy are captured. Right. Uh, Matthew Fox's character is fatally injured, so he mm-hmm. di- dies of his injuries, but he does manage to take quite a few with him. Mm-hmm. And Patrick's, w- Patrick Wilson's character has been left behind mm-hmm. because his leg has not gotten any better. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's following on behind, and it turns out he will be actually quite an important. You know, right. He'll be able, to, be able to turn the tide later on. But um, So is he the protagonist? He is later on in the film, yeah. Okay. Um but there is then a scene in the troglodyte caves when um the sheriff and the deputy are locked in a sort of wooden cage up against the cave wall mm-hmm. and on the other side the doctor and the other deputy are locked up and the troglodytes get the other deputy out of the cage and they do something to him that I don't think I've ever seen done to anyone in any film ever. Obviously, it's not a real person that they're doing it to. Mm-hmm. Um, it's one of the it's... most grisly horror scenes I've ever seen. I had to watch it. I, I'm I'm fairly well versed in horror. You know, I don't. Right. There's not much that. Do you watch any of this gore porn stuff like Saw and things? I uh, I have seen some Saw movies. Yeah. Have and you that... seen The Dentist? No, I haven't seen The Dentist. Mm. No, it's not that. Um, it's not very gory, but it's quite hard to swallow. I think the last, f- <laughs> as a dentist, I think yeah. as the last film that really, I think we've come back to this a few times actually. The last film that really turned my stomach was Audition. Yeah, uh, I must for, watch it again. Yeah, for two reasons. There's there's the reason when there's the there's the scene when. Uh, should we should we talk about this now, or should we should we maybe talk about audition in a future podcast? Yeah, let's do audition. But there's two. I'll have to, th- I might rewatch yeah. it though. Cause yeah. Yeah. Anyway, there's two scenes in that that really, really made me feel physically sick. Mm-hmm. Um, and although this this scene doesn't didn't make me feel physically sick, it did repulse me. Mm-hmm. And it repulses you for a good reason because you are supposed to see that these these cave tr- dwelling troglodytes are beyond redemption. Mm-hmm. And they des- okay. they deserve everything that's coming to them. Okay, so it just simplifies things. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so, uh, but what what the uh, what the sheriff has in his um, is some opium mm-hmm. that they were using to keep uh, Patrick Wilson's wounds, you know, sort of try and mm-hmm. subdue the pain. They have uh, a quantity of opium mm-hmm. that they pretend is whiskey. Mm-hmm. And then the troglodytes want this and they drink too much of it. Mm-hmm. And he says that at least one of them has drunk enough that will kill him. Mm-hmm. And the other one, the other two will be out of action for a while. And whilst they are, they try and figure a way out. And as they're doing that, um, Patrick Wilson's character finally arrives. Mm-hmm. But, and in a, in a, in a huge showdown at the end, Kurt Russell's sheriff is fatally injured, but he holds the fort for them. He's got enough bullets to take out the rest of the troglodytes, and they manage to escape. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, as they are leaving, you hear three um, three shots ring out, implying that he has managed to finish the job. Um, and this is uh, this is um. And un- I would say it starts off as an unsteady mashup of some fairly unsteady comedy, mm-hmm. um, some decent acting. So the writing's good enough, uh, but it's when they get into the hills that it becomes really intense. Okay, and it's so a, it wasn't. Yeah. It started to sound like it's going to have been a disappointment. Well, I start. I started out with this film really, really looking forward to it, and I thought, mm-hmm. oh no, you know, this some of this comedy is a bit ill judged mm-hmm. and badly delivered. But then once that settles down, um, it uh, it becomes a very, very effective horror film. Okay, a very, okay. very effective horror film, and, and that mashup of horror and western 
is uh, is is really good. It's well handled. So what what are the good things about a western that you you like to see in this? Um, well, I like to see you can sort of get a sense of the unknown. You know, the, the, in mm-hmm. the old west, pretty much everything was um, untouched. You know, there was some mm-hmm. um, things are just basically generally dangerous. Yes, everything's dangerous. Everything's out to kill you. There's snakes everywhere, scorpions, uh, spiders, um, um, troglodytes who will eat you. That kind of thing, mm-hmm. um, and uh, and also outlaws with guns who will rob you and shoot you in the middle of nowhere, and nobody will ever know about it. Mm-hmm. So um, you've got all of that, all of that mashed together works extremely well. In the same way that um, you know a haunted house movie like Alien, which has the unknown, and yeah, this jeopardy, isolated yeah. jeopardy. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Bone Tomahawk w- works in the same kind of way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. As, I'm not comparing it to Alien. I mean, it's not as good a film as Alien because very few films are. But name one. Name, name one film that's good as Alien. Blade Runner. <laughs> another Ridley Scott film. Yeah. Um, name another. <clears throat> another film that's as good as Alien. Um. Uh. What a sci-fi film or any kind of genre. Any film. Any film that's as good as Alien. That's really hard. Yeah. Uh, that has that kind of... What, does it have to be the same kind of like nail-biting tension and that kind of thing? And no. Nope. Beautiful looking and... Um, it just has to be as good as Alien. It has to be as good as Alien. I mean, I think Alien. I'd probably accept Blade Runner. The Shining. Really? Yeah. That's, the Shining's all right. Yeah. I'd say The Shining. It's all right. Um... Full Metal Jacket. There's a couple of stuff with Kubrick films that I really love there. Um, Full Metal Jacket is... I, the thing about Alien is that it's perfectly formed. Mm. I think Full Metal Jacket's, a, I think, a much less good film, but it's also... It is exactly what it is. I think In full, a good way. I think Full Metal Jacket, for me, I went to see it at the cinema when it came out. And it was... It, it left such an impression on me. Mm. Um... Not because of the way it portrayed war, but because of its visual beauty. Mm. Um, there's some there's some shots in Full Metal Jacket. I'm thinking about when they are uh, travelling through a city, which was actually mm. Docklands, the London Docklands. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, at the time. Um, and there's there's a shot when there's a tank, and there's uh, marines left and right of this tank. And they're doing this covering formation, and yeah. the camera just captures it. It's just beautiful. It's beautiful yeah. to look at. There's it is some, amazing. So much beautiful uh, filmmaking in Full Metal Jacket. It's, uh, and it's hard to believe that that was Stanley Kubrick's penultimate film, because mm. he made so few films in, right. in his career, but so many. Uh, you know, career yeah, career defining zeitgeisty films. Yeah, yeah. Every trashy film ever since Full Metal Jacket that has involved any form of <laughs> sort of army training. Yeah, especially science fiction army training. Oh yeah, for, yeah. So so for example, Starship Troopers. Starship Troopers and <clears throat> uh, Live Die Repeat that I watched the other day. Yeah, you. What did you think of that? I um. I was ashamed to have liked it. You were ashamed that you liked it? Yeah, but actually, after you said you liked it, and I was, I thought about it again, then I, I think I probably just shouldn't be ashamed. I should just say that I liked it. No, embrace it. The thing it. is, it was, so, it was so simple. Yeah. It, was, it wasn't very original. It wasn't at all original. But it was very well executed. Yeah, really well executed. The, um, the opening scene... Uh, at uh, where where Tom Cruise lands in a helicopter in Trafalgar Square mm-hmm. was done for real, right? Um, and he was co- the director was convinced to do that by Tom Cruise, right. who basically stood in front of him and <clears throat> flashed his one thousand watt smile and said, "You can do that." <laughs> and of course, you've then got to figure out how you're going to do it. Yeah. Um, but it does look it, it's very effective. I think it's, yeah. it's a very effective opening. Yeah, I I went to see that at the cinema. I've watched it a couple of times since then. I tell you what, my other thought about that 
is that I really enjoyed the the bit where it's like a computer game and he can repeat and get better and better yeah, at things. Yeah, it's good that, isn't it? And then I actually felt I almost completely lost interest when you were supposed to... It was supposed to be real Jeopardy because it was no longer like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but actually, I, I I was much less interested. I really liked the bit where you could do it over and over. Yeah. So yeah. even though they're supposed to be turning up the tension and this is the bit where it really matters... Mm. I was a bit like, meh. Yeah. So. But it's basically really good. Well yeah, worth it. It's a, it's a good film. And and it, I think it didn't get the kudos that it deserved when it came out. Because mm-hmm. I think it is, um, it's solid. Yeah. Yeah. Back to Bone Tomahawk. Right, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Continue. Yes. Um, so I think that uh, this is a very good film. I think that if you know people in search of something different from a horror movie will find it in this film. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that it's the director's debut, right? And as debuts go, it's 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 solid. You know, it's not fantastic. I think it's a solid film. Mm-hmm. Um, and it will definitely appeal to horror fans. It certainly mm. ra- it certainly ramps up the tension mm-hmm. to uh, excruciating levels towards the end. Right, right, right. And as I said, it's got this scene that is almost beyond the pale mm-hmm. in terms of nastiness. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I'm not. <clears throat> I think on this podcast that <clears throat> it's supposed to be clean. Mm-hmm. I can't really go into what yeah. happens. But you, but you weren't. You didn't feel that that was gratuitous. No, no, no. It's it's entirely it's entirely in keeping with what mm. you would expect from a film like this, and from what you've been led to believe by the Indian tracker, these people they these people are doing exactly what you've been led to believe they will mm-hmm. do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, which is why he said you shouldn't go into the hills and try and find them. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a waste of time, and you won't come back alive. And in fact. You know, two of them don't come back alive. Mm-hmm. Three of them. Yeah. Yeah. So it's basically, yeah, the, if you're going to kill a load of people, you need to establish that they deserve killing. Yeah. They also and You have... also need to establish that, that you're in a scary situation, otherwise it's not a scary film. Yeah, a scary and what appears on the surface to be entirely hopeless and helpless. Hmm. Mm-hmm. But of course, help is on the way. Um, there's also a really nice bit of um, misdirection in the film mm-hmm. when um, uh, Patrick Wilson, whose whose character's name is Arthur O'Dwyer, so he's he's the wife, he's the husband. I keep saying the wife, the husband of the doctor, mm-hmm. um, and his leg has been getting steadily worse during this journey. Mm-hmm. And there's a really nice bit of misdirection when the um, the deputy, Richard Jenkins' deputy, says, I've done surgery during the war. Presumably he's referring to the Civil War. Um, we're going to need to do something with your leg. And when you think they're going to do something with the leg, it cuts away to another scene. Mm-hmm. So I thought that they'd taken his foot off. Mm-hmm. You know, I thought that that's what they had to do. But when... We come back to him. It turns out that they hadn't. Right. So that was a really nice bit of misdirection. I think that was well done. Right. Right. Um, although, you know, basically his foot is is probably of no use. So maybe they should have taken it off. But um, it is. Yes, yeah, good film. <laughs> cool. And it's. Uh, is it dark? How do you mean? Is it... What do you mean, dark and disturbing? Yeah. Yeah, in places, but also... Okay, so I'll talk about the um, the ill-judged comedy. Uh-huh. Um, in the first... I'd say in the first third of the film, when they're in the town, there's some comedy that falls flat mm-hmm. quite badly. And that got mm-hmm. me worried. Yeah. But then there's a, there's a lovely exchange between Richard Jenkins and Kurt Russell when... Richard Jenkins visits Kurt Russell at the um, the jail, at the sheriff's office, and says, "I can smell, I can smell soup." 
Kurt Russell says, yeah, I'm making soup. And um, so he sits him down and he gives him a bowl and he has a bowl. And Richard Jenkins smells it and he says, it smells like corn. Kurt Russell says, yeah, it's corn chowder. (laughs) And Richard Jenkins has this lovely line that says, things are lining up. (laughs) And then he goes to take, he goes to eat some and it's really hot and he spills most of it down his clothes. And that's a really lovely exchange between two really good actors who okay. really who really kind of sell in that short exchange they sell their relationship mm-hmm, mm-hmm. to the camera in yeah. that they're very, you know they're very comfortable with each other and Kurt right, Russell right. trusts this guy and they both trust each other and that's a really nice bit of character work. Right, right, right. And Matthew Fox also does very well in terms of the fact that he's quite proud and haughty and a bit of a sarcastic so and so, but he is a good shot. Mm-hmm. Um, and there, there's a a scene later in the film which I didn't talk about because it doesn't really lead you anywhere. This mm-hmm. this, this scene, uh, I suppose, what it does is it shows that Matthew Fox is a, has a hair trigger. Is that right. they they come across at night uh, two Mexican guys who are armed and claimed to have seen their fire and wanted to come and share it. Mm-hmm. And um, as they're talking to them, Matthew Fox shoots them both dead. <laughs> and they say, well, why do you do that? And he says, because they would have killed us. And, the, and of course, he doesn't know that. Mm-hmm. He doesn't know that. But, but he's got a hair trigger and he doesn't really think too long about stuff before he yeah. goes ahead and does it. And he plays that well. Mm-hmm. You know, he does it well. And, and that's uh, part of the jeopardy, presumably. That- yeah. Everything's dangerous. Everything's dangerous. And, uh, you know, if you come across two people at night, um, there may be more of them, but uh, but there mm-hmm. aren't any more. So may- maybe he was wrong, mm-hmm. but he made that decision. And Better safe than sorry. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. But two people die because of that. Um, the other thing that, that occurs in the film is that, is that these cave troglodytes have... Uh, they can't speak mm-hmm. because uh, they have basically mutilated themselves and put uh, like pan pipes in their throat, mm-hmm. which they use to communicate with each other across long distance. Okay. Um, so they can't speak at all. Um, that sounds cool and scary. Cool and scary. Uh, and that's something that Patrick Wilson's character uses later in the film when he's killed one of these guys, he pulls the thing out of its throat and then blows through it. Right. To, nice. Yeah. And it's all covered in viscera. It's pretty disgusting. <laughs> um, cool. Yeah. So it's well worked out. It's got, it's got, uh, the burial site is very creepy. You know, it's, um, it's on a plateau and there's sort of, sort of stones put out on the ground and it's all very geometric and, Blair Witchy, basically. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, that's very coolly done. I mean, I think I think the design and and um, look of the film is very good. Mm-hmm. It's been well worked out. I think it's sometimes hard to explain why. Like, it's hard to talk about a horror film to explain what you know, what it's why it's scary. Or, mm. You know, yeah. It's not. It's not very word. Not very accessible to words. Not really. I think that I, I'm a great lover of of horror, and I don't. I don't think we've talked much about horror films on this podcast. Not direct. We've talked tangentially about yeah how we like. I them. don't think we've ever talked about a horror film uh, until now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but I lo- I love a good scare, mm. um, and even things that are sort of you know not directly a horror film like um, I Am Legend. Right. With Will Smith. That absolutely yeah. scared the willies out of me. I really enjoyed that. There's a couple of scenes in that. There's the one where he follows the dog into the building mm-hmm. that is so intense. Um, and then then inside there's all those things that are sleeping and hibernating. And Yeah. There was something in that that wasn't explored. Did someone rescue him from when he was hanging upside down? And we never saw who. Something like that. Um... Yeah, so when he's in the truck. I can't remember. Yeah, so towards the end of the film, uh, no, no, not towards the end, I suppose in the last third, 
But you don't know whether he's imagining things as well, do you? No, but he does get rescued. He gets rescued by the the woman and the kid in another truck. And they yeah. take him back to his house. And that's how the things find him, because he's he was injured. Right. And they follow the blood trail. I really enjoyed I Am Legend. It, it, it is flawed, but I think that for for most of its running time, it's extremely good. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, I really enjoyed one it. One of the best things ev- I've ever seen, actually, I Am Legend. I wouldn't put it in my top ten, but um, it is very, very good. Very good. I wouldn't put it anywhere near my top ten. Mm. And I wouldn't put Bone Tomahawk in my top ten either, but I do recommend it. Mm-hmm. I think that uh, if you're a lover of horror and you want something different, as I said earlier, this is it. Yeah. I haven't. Oh, I did watch. Um, I am a lover of horror, horror mm-hmm. although probably older. Well, older I don't stuff. know. I don't watch new. I don't watch newer stuff really, but I did watch a New Zealand film where there's a man living in the walls. Oh, what's that? New Zealand. Uh, I think I recommended it to you on an episode of this podcast. Oh, blimey. Okay. You're living um, in the walls. Yeah, what's it called? Mm. And it's really funny and really scary. Oh, okay. Often at the same time. Right, okay. Well, that's good. Yeah, funny, if scary could, is good. If I could recall its name or anything about it, I would definitely tell you. Excellent. Meanwhile, I can recommend something entirely unrelated. Oh, yes. What's that? I've been watching a series on it's, uh, from Channel 4 that's available on all four called mm-hmm. Babylon. Okay. And it's billed as something like a sharp, hum- sharp comedy about police work. Okay. And basically, the first episode is kind of comedy. You know, it has funny stuff in it. Yep. And from then on, it goes on to be a really hard-hitting, um, gripping drama about police. And it, it covers, it reminds me of The Wire or something. It covers characters in all different bits. So it covers people running the Met, because it's the, it's the London okay. Metropolitan Police Force it's, it's covering. It covers the people running it and, like, the deputy mayor and stuff. Mm-hmm. But it also covers some bobbies on the beat and um, some members of the of the um, the gun squad. What are they called? Anyway, SW... Uh, I don't know. Uh, no, that, I was going to say SW19. That's, isn't that Wimbledon? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> SO19? I don't know. Anyway. That's where, the gun, that's where the gun squad are, is in Wimbledon. SO19? I don't know. Anyway, the uh, the covers the members of the gun squad, and obviously things happen and uh, drama ensues, and uh, it's really gripping. That sounds good. And it was and on Channel initially, Four. Initially, quite funny. It's on all four. Yes, it's on all four. Excellent. If you can sit through the adverts, you can watch it for free. Cool. That sounds good. It's well good. I really wasn't expecting it to be. Mm. I was expecting it to pass the time, but it was much better than that. Nice. Excellent. Yeah. It was slightly random. Yeah. No, no, that's good. We like random. I'm just looking, cool. so, up, I'm just looking mm-hmm. up someone who worked on this, on Bone Tomahawk. So, Bone Tomahawk, mm-hmm. it, uh, it seems, sounds like it's a passable film. Oh, it's, why, more, it's more than passable. Yeah. All right. A good film, maybe. Yeah. But why, why are you better off because you've seen it? Okay. Why is the world a better place because it exists? Because it's always good to see Kurt Russell in a great film. Just because of the facial hair? Yeah, he has amazing facial hair in this film. Uh, and it's always good to see Richard Jenkins in anything, because he's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Patrick Wilson gives good support. I think that that um, good original horror movies are few and far between. There's an awful lot of cookie-cutter horror films around. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this is not one of them. This is quite. This stands apart. It scared um, you in an interesting way. And yeah, that left you and, off. and that scene that I keep talking about mm-hmm. has left, like the two scenes in audition. Mm-hmm. That scene has left a mark on my brain. Mm-hmm. That and that's good. In the same way that I relive those two scenes in audition and go, ha, 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 
<laughs> I do the same thing with this scene in Bone Tomahawk because it's so nasty. Okay, and that's a good thing. It's a good thing, yeah. I think any film that can do that is is good. Cool. Awesome. Um, yes. What were you looking up? Okay, so what I was looking up was um, the cinematographer on Bone Tomahawk is a guy called um, Benji Bakshi. And I was wondering if he's related to a director and producer called Ralph Bakshi, who back in the 70s, I think, or maybe early 80s, made an animated version of The Lord of the Rings. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, uh, for the BBC? No, no, no. It was, it was, a, it was a, a rotoscoped film. So um, do you know about rotoscoping? It's, um, it's where they shoot... They shoot the the film normally, and then they draw over the film. Yeah, it, that it's the was kind of thing that Richard Linklater yeah, did. I thought it was for the BBC. I, was, I think I've seen some of it, and it was good. Yeah, it is good. It's got a really good voice cast, um, including John Hurt as Aragorn. Oh yeah, yeah, who's yeah, very yeah. good. Um, I'm pretty but, sure I've seen it. But I think with a name like Bakshi, and I, I and working in the movie business, that Benji Bakshi is probably related to Ralph Bakshi. But I can't find any confirmation of that anywhere. Mm-hmm. So I'm just going to have to speculate wildly. Mm-hmm. Um, if anybody, if any listener knows, mm-hmm. maybe they could to uh, let us know because we love feedback and we don't get enough of it. If any of our one listener knows, <laughs> yes. Perhaps they. Perhaps if you could Google it for us. Yeah, rather than me doing it now, which is a bit alienating for our listener. Or look on look on uh, Wikipedia. Yeah. Or IMDb. Yeah, he, he hasn't got a listing on Wikipedia. Um, he has got a listing on IMDb, but it doesn't say anything. But about so it. have I. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Have you got a listing for the same thing for the yeah <laughs> the twelfth night thing? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 I can't enter the well done you competition on Kermit and Mayo, and nor can you, because you're on IMDb. <laughs> <laughs> I, I also can't enter the Great British Bake Off because I'm a fully qualified chef. Right. Oh, I so, I could. That's it. Yeah. Okay. That's, well, that's basically it. I'm okay with that. That is hilarious. <laughs> <We're> overqualified. <laughs> yeah, overqualified for those two things. Two things that I'd actually quite like to do. All I did. Right, e- yeah. I did email Como de Mayo. Say, look, I'm not a professional filmmaker, but I have got a listing on IMDb, and they said, sorry, those are the rules, which is fair yeah. enough. Uh, did you mention it's a vanity posting, so it shouldn't count? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they they said no. If you self post on IMDb, surely. Surely. Today, someone on Twitter linked to a, a blog post in which someone had rated uh, the all the jokes in Airplane. Ah, oh, yes. No, you sent that to me, and I picked out my favourite one. Which I can't, I can't actually say on this so, podcast. So funny! It is funny. I found myself chuckling about fifty jokes in. in yeah, the first fifty, I was like, "Well, they're not that good." Yeah, and then yeah, some of yeah, so good. I mean, I, some of them that are quite far up the list are some of my favourites. So, right. you know, one of my favourites is "It's a good job I never told him how much I hate his guts." <laughs> Yeah. It's a good job he never told you how much he hates your guts. Yeah. <laughs> I like I just like a hospital, what is it? Oh, what is it? Yeah. And th- there's so actually when you read through that list you realize how many jokes Johnny in the tower has. Yeah. He's got loads. Yeah. Loads of jokes. <laughs> what do you make of this, Johnny? <laughs> I can make a hat, a brooch, a pterodactyl. <laughs> I think he's quite I think he's quite a disturbed man. He probably shouldn't be doing the job that he's doing, to be honest. Yeah. Anyway, airplane. Yes. Yes, double thumbs up. Oh, yeah. Classic. Better than the sequel. I don't think I've seen it. Which is not good. It wasn't made by the Zuckers, so... But it does have quite a good turn by William Shatner in it. Uh-huh. Uh, which is pretty good, but no, it's not good. It doesn't really, okay. doesn't really stand up. So, uh, do me some quick plugging. Oh, yeah, okay. So, I present a radio show on uh, Glastonbury FM 107.1 
uh, in the Glastonbury Street and Wells area of Somerset. Uh, they're getting a new transmitter. Uh, in fact, the transmitter's up, but it's awaiting a part, apparently. Uh, but it'll be up on Friday, and then the the, the uh, catchment area will be, will be bigger. Which is It'll be further further along, past the wells. Past the wells, yeah. And, in, and, uh, and the further lake. up the street. <laughs> oh, by the pond. By the pond. Um, further up Glastonbury Street. So I present that uh, movie movie reviews and music show on... No, no spoilers. No by spoilers the way, on that show. We didn't though. mention that this that this is going to contain spoilers. No, it does. Well, you, you probably yeah, figured that out already. It has contained that. That goes out live uh, between 6 and 7 on a Thursday and is repeated between 2 and 3 on Friday. And there are podcast highlights of that. If you search for Movie Mashup, which has Camel Case, but I think you can probably search for it without the Camel Case, on iTunes or your podcasting app of choice. Uh, speaking of speaking of iTunes, yes. one, one of our iTunes listeners told me that our entire podcast is repeated on iTunes. Oh, that's quality. So we get... You listen to to it, the whole thing, and you're halfway through, and then you get the whole thing again. What? That's that's weird. So uh, yeah, can you fix that? Because you're the iTunes. I'm I'm the iTunes. You're the contact. iTunes contact. I don't know what's wrong. Why would it do that? You're the that, iTunes though? monitor. I have no idea. Okay, I'll check that out. I'll subscribe and and see what's going on with that, and then make contact. It might be. I don't know whether it's our blog our blog software that's somehow submitting it wrong or who knows could be I'll I'll check it out and I'll and I'll probably come I'll get up against some bureaucracy so that that was feedback yeah we got some feedback it's yeah. funny how you never get any good feedback isn't it <laughs> it's like hey love the podcast <laughs> no it's like yeah it's broken fix it <laughs> yeah yep yeah but then it worked. feedback like that is welcome Either, yeah. either kind. It is welcome, but we would love some nice feedback because we we crave uh, attention. Approval. Approval, yes, that's that's the word. And attention. And attention, yeah, yeah both of those clear. things. That's clear, that's <clears throat> um, clear. Uh, plug, plug so yeah, uh, so I make YouTube videos mostly about programming, teaching you new programming languages, things like that. Um, I'm also planning to release this podcast on a different uh, YouTube channel featuring uh, visual, featuring low quality video of us talking with headsets on. So exciting. So you're not missing anything if you don't so go. So exciting. But if you like to consume media through YouTube, it might be helpful. Um, also, I make an Android game called Rabbit Escape uh, where you have to save some rabbits. It's like a puzzle game, puzzly action game. Rabbit Escarpe, as I like to call it. Rabbit Escarpe. Rabbit Escarpe. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's probably it for plugging. I can't think that's I that's the plugging. Yeah. You can like read my blog or something if you want. I don't have a blog. Excellent. You have Facebook, though. I, like, have, I don't understand Facebook. I, oh, I have a book face page. Yeah, I have a Facebook page called Andy's Movie Mashup. And I'd love it. If our listener would actually, I think our one listener has already liked it. But if we ever pick up any right. more listeners, they can don't like it as well. <laughs> if you're if you're that listener, don't bother liking but it. But I do I do plug this podcast through that page. Yeah. So good. um, there, there you go. Yeah, I'm, I will get round to plugging this podcast on a YouTube video if I ever make another one. Excellent. Uh, in which case, I'm planning a series on how to write your own programming language. Oh, excellent. I was going to say that on the video, you can watch me picking my nose and drinking um, blackcurrant squash. This video, yes, awesome, yeah, yeah. Because Do we it. don't we don't normally have the video. No, but we will. <laughs> From now on, we will because it's going to it'll prove so popular. I think I'll probably put up a cardboard cutout of Bradley Cooper, and then I can pick my nose behind <laughs> it, and nobody will know. Or maybe a freeze frame. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyway, uh, yeah, thank you very much. See you next time. Yeah, thank you.